OK, because part of the debate that would suggest we should not have a nuclear electricity generation industry here is the time it will take to build it out. And then the next aspect that you raise is trying to train up your people so that you can actually run those plants safely. That's going to be, if you like, a significant impediment if Australia were ever to make a decision that nuclear is on the table. That's correct. When you're looking at an engineer, you can't just say, oh, I want a nuclear engineer. You know, they need to work for over 10 years. They would have studied for four to six years and then they need to become a subject matter expert in whatever that field might be. But just say it's a 10 year learning on, on, on that area. Uh, and then they become considered, would be considered a chartered engineer in, in their specific area. Uh, so overnight, we can't just say we need a uh, thousand nuclear engineers. It doesn't work that way. It's like if you're a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant, it takes years of learning and experience to be seen then as, you know, a professional uh, engineer in that area. So not only that, they need to be trained up front in how you build, design uh, and operate nuclear, uh, and that's years away. Okay, but because we have insufficient engineers in so many different categories in Australia, but specifically in um, the renewable energy space, plus also in this nuclear energy space, does that compromise, do you think, even our net zero emissions targets into the future? We need to focus on our competitive advantage in Australia and really focus on those areas in clean energy where we know we have the capability already. Uh, so putting nuclear to one side, we know we have capability in wind, uh, in uh, household solar, in batteries and in the technology that sits behind that. And there's been a lot of work done in this area and case studies all over Australia. So if we focus on those areas, but then also focus on skilling up, we should be able to meet our targets. We've been under pressure before in other areas and we've been able to uh, increase the workforce. We have all those workers in thermal energy already, so in coal and gas, and there's no reason why we cannot transition those workers across. There's also no reason why we can't bring engineers who, have, who haven't been working, they may have been caring or have left the field. There's no reason why we can't retrain them and bring them back in, and there's no reason why we can't uh, bring in those migrant engineers who are here in Australia at the moment and who are not working in clean energy and there's no reason why we can't bring them in and also skill them up. We should be able to meet our targets if we really focus on skills and capability. Is one of the big impediments to all these targets, to whatever it might be, that the vast majority of engineers in Australia are men? How, that's a great <laughs> I think one of the challenges we have in Australia is we're not attracting over 50% of the workforce being women. Uh, only 16% of our working engineers are female and of that 16%, 3.8% of them are born in Australia. We need to attract more women into engineering. Uh, you know, there's huge potential there. So why don't we? Oh, there's cultural reasons, uh, if you, and there's bias reasons. If you look at uh, girls in school, uh, the schools don't uh, advocate the importance of maths and science. Parents, teachers and, and career advisors uh, don't advertise and advocate on behalf of engineering. There's so many wonderful potential roles in engineering, and all the amazing females I meet in engineering are remarkable, but we need thousands more of them. Uh, so there's, there's the issues of school, there's the issues of young girls don't know what engineering means. Uh, so they look at the other, you know, they might, they know what a doctor is and they know what an accountant is and what a lawyer is, but we want them to know what a, a, an engineer is. You know, we really do want everyone to find their inner engineer. And there's an opportunity to do that. You know, we have the ability and we have this, the, um, the intellectual uh, grunt in Australia to bring them into engineering, but it's really attracting and retaining them in engineering. Romilly Madhu, always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross.